I am Michael Pearl. We're here at the door located in Loveville, Tennessee, answering your Bible questions. And uh, this person uh, named um, M-A-R-C, Mark, Mark, Mac, Mark, Mark, I guess. Uh, Mark says, I purchased a King James Bible at Walmart for my son the other day. Is it the 1611 authorized version or one of the three revisions that I've been reading about on the Internet? And if it is one of the three revisions and not the original, does it matter? Somebody's been messing with you, Mark. I've read that stuff, too. I went to Bible college. I studied Greek. I have Greek Bibles in my uh, office. Here's another question, and we'll go with it. I have gone to a King James only, and I have a church. No, I've gone to a King James only position, and I have a lot of other translations. How do I get rid of them since I do not agree with them anymore? I do not feel comfort to give them away as I do not agree with their translations. So I'm confused as to what to do with them. Could you please help? Well, I, I, when I used to have a large library of hard copy books, I recently threw about a half a ton of them away. I had a whole shelf of other Bibles, uh, fake Bibles. And I kept them on the shelf with witchcraft and the cults. And so I had this long shelf of fake Bibles, witchcraft, and cults. And uh, you say, what did you keep them for? Well, sometimes you need a laugh. Sometimes you just need to feel smug. So when you're studying your King James Bible and you come across a good doctrine, you look it up in one of these other translations and laugh at it. And uh, so that's, that's, so he asked the question, what could I do with it? Well, you could drive through an Amish community. When you see a house with one of those little four by four buildings in the back, got a little half moon carved in the door, go up and give them the, that box and they will sit them in there and put them to very good use. All right. Now let's get back to the question here. Uh, he purchased, uh, which one of the revisions is it? I have here a photostat page of the book of Revelation from the 1611 first printing off of the hand press right here. And then I have a, another page uh, of the exact same words, but it's written with modern letters. And uh, so what I did, I took the book of Revelation to answer, to, to find out your question. I took the book of Revelation and I counted every single word in it. Uh, it took me a long time. I took pages like this and I counted uh, a paragraph and I wrote the number. I counted it again and I counted it again. If I got three times straight in a row, I put that notation there, and then I added the six or eight numbers together. I added them again, I added them again, I added them again. If the third time I got a different count from the first two times, then I did it three times again, three whole more times, to match either that one or the other two. And I kept doing it until I was certain I had the right number. Uh, you said that took a long time. Yeah, it took a long time. But if you don't watch television, you've got a lot of time. And so... I counted the number of words in the 1611. Now, my computer would tell me how many is in the Cambridge, right? And I found there was uh, 12,000 words exactly in the 1611. The Cambridge said, the modern on my computer, said there was 11,995. That's five words short. So that means through these four editions of the King James Bible, five words got lost up until the present. That troubled me. Not a single word should be lost. So I took the modern version and the 1611, skipping the other two revisions, obviously, and went line by line, word by word, taking notations to find the missing four that were in the modern version. I found them. In the 1611, it said, first fruits, two words. In the modern one, it said, first fruits, one word. First begotten, first begotten. They were all there, just the way the computer reads it. So you need to go back. You can get these things online and read. I can read it. It's got old English letters. The problem is, and I have a modern, uh, modern printing of the same words as the 1611 spelled the same way. 
you got these taking the place of W's. You got to, like Revelation, the Revelation says R E U E L A T I O N, Revelation, uh, of Jesus spelled I E S U S, like Ixus, which is in the Greek letter. Uh, Christ, which God gave, G A U E, the U's or V's, and the V's are U's, and the W's, and the W's are V's, and the, it, a lot of your European languages are like that. Gave unto is V N T O, him. To show S H E W E V two unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. In other words, the same words written exactly the same way. So those so called revisions were nothing more than bringing the spelling up to date. Spelling and punctuation up to date in your 1611. They were not like modern translations where they went back and say, oh, we made a big mistake here. They were faithful to the original. So when you read the one today, the Cambridge edition, by the way, you're reading exactly what came off the press with the exception of some typos. These types were set, you know how you set type backwards? The letters are backwards. And you take these little lead types and you stick them in there and you cram them all together with spaces and you put little things to hold them at the end, line by line, reading it backwards. Can you imagine trying to do that to a whole Bible? They had a lot of time on their hands, didn't they? And so they left out four words in the first 1611. Said, so then how come there's 16,000? I mean, uh, 12,000 exactly. Because they too had taken uh, five words. They left out five words. They had taken five words that were single, later edition, and made two words out of them. So there was 12,000 uh, in the 1611 and in the 1613, there was still 12,000, and there's 12,000 today. God maintained 12,000 words exactly, no matter whether there was a missing unto, and that's what was missing, like unto and uh, of, the prepositions missing the three times. And one of them is like, we're under the church of Thyatira, under the church of Laodicea, and to, and to Philadelphia, and Philadelphia. It left out there, unto Philadelphia. Uh, so that was the four arrows and the book of Revelation and the first printing, but that was not an error in text. That was an omission. If you tear a page out of your Bible today, you haven't changed the Bible. You're simply missing a word that we know, or a page that we know belongs in it. So that's the answer to your question. You can read your 1611 and know you're reading it just like it was written in the Greek. Not the Sinaiticus Vaticanus, but the text of Receptus Greek, not the corrupt Greek that I was taught when I was in college, but the Greek that the church has accepted as the Word of God from the beginning to this present, the Greek that represents 95 to 98 percent of all Greek manuscripts that are found, not that two or three percent of Greek text that were produced by infidels in the, 18, in the 1880s and are the basis for all your modern corrupt commercial Bibles. Get yourself a King James Bible and you'll have the Word of God to English-speaking people. All right, that's the answer to that question.